Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig. It is nine o'clock on a Monday. It's time for a five by five. This is where I take five subjects related to magic. I spend five minutes talking about each subject. Move on to the other subjects. It's quick, it's fast. You never know what you're going to get. Now, I'm going to be returning to the original format very, very soon. And we're going to be, because we've been deviating away from it and we've been doing five performance clips and five ways to improve your SEO. And I just wanted to vary it up. You know, the way to keep things interesting is to vary it up. I will be going back to the original structure very, very soon at some point for a few for a few episodes. But I wanted to do another performer spotlight special. These have been very, very popular recently. And uh, it, it, it's great because my mission statement with this channel is to bring to the attention of people that watch this channel magicians that they might never have seen before and why you should watch them. And this is the perfect example because today I'm going to be talking about Blake Voigt. Now, Blake Voigt is probably one of my favorite magicians of all time. I'm very high on Blake. I'm a huge Blake Voigt fan. And, uh, you know, I think he's one of the most creative magicians on the planet, whether he's doing close up, whether he's doing stage, whether he's doing illusions. I think that Blake Voigt is absolutely amazing. And so on today's video, I wanted to talk to you about Blake Voigt and highlight five performances of Blake's that I think showcase why he is one of the best in the world. Uh, if you haven't seen Blake Voigt perform before, you're in for a treat. If you've seen him perform um, we'll see how many of these performances that you've actually seen. And the first is The Vanishing Stool. So let's have a look at that one right now. So first up, we have The Vanishing Stool. That was The Vanishing Stool that you just saw. I think the first time a lot of people saw it was on James Corden. And he combined it with his um, multiple out system that he sells on his website as well. Um, this is kind of more of a performance just of the vanishing stool. And I can't tell you how much I love this. I'll tell you how much I love it, actually. I've got one. Very few people have got one. I've got one. I say I've got one. I haven't. Ryland's got one. When Ryland started performing on stage regularly and I wanted him to have a finale, I wanted him to have like an end routine that like nobody else was doing. I reached out to Blake and got him to make a vanishing stool for Ryland. Um, and the reason is I wanted Ry to have a routine that he could perform and nobody would have seen it before. And that's what you have here. Now, what I love about the vanishing stool is it's an illusion. It plays big like a big illusion, but it feels like it's nothing. It feels like there's nothing on the stage, right? You've just got three chairs and they're covered up with cloths and you're leading people down the garden path. You're, th you're making them think that one thing's happening and then you have that magician in trouble scenario where everybody thinks that you've screwed up and everything's gone wrong and then you turn it on its head and you show that right from the very beginning, right from the very, very beginning, the whole thing was planned out and uh, I, I just love this routine, I really do. Um, I love the fact that there's audience interaction, that you're bringing people up on stage. I love the fact that there's a prediction there, a prediction element. Because, And you don't want to underestimate that. That moment where you pull off and you show that you've got the correct colours the first time and the second time, that's really strong magic. Really, really strong. And I, 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 I've heard some people say that I've seen The Vanishing Store. Oh, you know, you get that out of the way quickly. No, you don't. That's a really strong moment. If you play it and you structure it the right way, that's an incredible moment that they never see coming, um, which leads to that brilliant finale um, that really is brilliant, where, you know, the, the stool just vanishes. And that's, wow. I mean, nobody ever sees that vanishing stool coming. Like, nobody ever sees it coming. You know, when, you, when you've got clear coach and you've got clear... Um, you know, you've got the clear coat and 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 you're kind of like, oh my gosh, what's going to happen? I don't know. Boom. And I've seen Ryland kill with this, but Blake Voigt performs it better than absolutely anybody. It is the absolute perfect de definition of pack small plays massive. And that's what happens with this. It packs very, very small, but it plays absolutely massive, which is what you want. It'll, it'll play to the biggest theatre. So in uh, the, the first routine I wanted to showcase to you was The Vanishing Stool. And it's a perfect example of how Blake can take the concept of a stage illusion and make it 
so it's still a stage illusion, but it's not a traditional stage illusion. You're not using boxes or anything like that. And you're going to see another example of that later on, by the way. Um, but yeah, if, if, if it's, it's one of my favorite routines. I knew the second I saw him perform it for the first time that I needed to have it in my act. I needed Ryland to have it in his act. And uh, yeah, it's great. So that's the uh, that's the first one. It's The Vanishing Stool by Blake Voigt. We're now going to look at the second routine. Uh, and this is more of a close-up performance that you can do close-up or parlor. And I reviewed this on the review show very early on, probably about two or three years ago. Very early on when the review show first started, I reviewed this. Uh, it's called Gypsy Tape. <laughs> So I think that this particular routine just showcases Blake's creativity and his ability to take a classic of magic and just look at it and go, okay, this is what everyone else is doing. What can I do with this to completely turn it on its head? It's why he's one of the most in-demand consultants out there. So the gypsy thread has been done for years, the whole idea of breaking the thread and then putting it back together. It's been done for years and so many people have done it in such a wonderful way. This is modernizing it because, you know, more people are familiar with tape, scotch tape, than they are thread. It's just as simple as that. And so when you get some scotch tape and you pull it off, first of all, everybody, it's more visual than, unless you're using like UV thread, it's more visual than, than the thread by using the tape. But secondly, you've got, because of the fact that tape is sticky, you've got these great moments where it's sticking to your fingers and you can see it. And then you've got that lovely moment in the final reveal where you show that, you know, you, you have them all sticking out and then you pull and they all go back together. It's such a beautiful moment. It really is. The, um, the gypsy tape routine is fantastic and a perfect example of why Blake is just so good at what he what he does and he is so good at what he does he really is and I've been performing gypsy tape now for about three years ever since I reviewed it and it it, it gets a great reaction I've done it in kid shows I've done it in cabaret shows I've done it virtually when I was doing virtual shows regularly and and regardless of the environment in which I perform it it always it gets a bigger reaction than Gypsy Thread, which is kind of strange, but it does. So there you go. That's uh, that's the second routine, um, Gypsy Tape. Perfect example of uh, Blake's creativity and how you can actually take something that everybody is used to and changing on its head. Um, we're gonna we're gonna look at that again later with another routine of Blake's. But first of all, the next thing we're gonna look at now is a routine that I know a lot of people do. And I've seen a lot of people do this on television. And it's a testament to, again, Blake's creativity. We're going to look at a routine that he developed and sold called duct tape. <laughs> Oh my god. Hold on. Yay! Okay, 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 okay,
And for me, this is one of the perfect openers. Uh, I've been doing this in my act for probably about a year now. Let me tell you why this is so good. So first of all, I've always been a big fan of Silent Treatment by, uh, by John Allen. And in many ways, this is very similar to Silent Treatment by John Allen. There are a couple of differences though. And the first difference is the method behind it. The method is just simply genius. I watched this a hundred times and got complete fooled every single time because when that tape is taken off, that card inside there is not switched in any way, shape or form. Secondly, the problem with uh, silent treatment is that you have to have it, um, you have to, have, what am I trying to say here? You have to have the little board or the iPad in front of you for people to read. And if they don't read it, it doesn't make any sense, right? So they have to be able to read it. So it doesn't play to a big theater. It won't pay to like, you know, more than a parlor sized audience because if they can't read it, they don't really know what's going on. With this, Blake has the ability to communicate in a very funny way what's going on, um, you know, by kind of broken talking. But at the same time, he's got that huge um, um, pad on stage that he's using to illustrate the choices that people are making. And because there's nothing gimmicked about that pad at all, you can have that as big as you want to. Like you could even have it the size of, you know, you could have a seven foot by seven foot one if you want to. And I think it was John Durabus, I might be wrong, but it might be John Durabus who performed this on Ellen. And he had an absolutely massive version of this. Um, so you, you're in a situation now where this is a routine that will play for absolutely anybody. 
at any sized audience and the method is incredible i've seen blake do this in in comedy clubs and he's literally not got a, nothing on stage he's not got a case he's not got anything he's just working out of his pockets and he's literally just turned up in skinny jeans and a t-shirt and he's performing this routine in comedy clubs and all he's got is this uh this board that he's holding and it's a very funny opening because you come out just the fact that you've got the tape on your face creates intrigue immediately. You then um, start talking in that kind of not talking way. It's instantly funny. But then the revelation of the card that they freely think of in the mouth. I mean, that's just very, very strong. And again, it's a perfect example of a routine that's designed to grab the audience's attention. When you come out on stage, that's why I say this is a great opener. When you come out on stage and you do this, there is no doubt in your in your audience's mind when you perform this, that you are funny, uh, that you are talented, that you are gonna be performing good magic that they're gonna enjoy. And that's so much better than a lot of the times when I see people come out on stage and they kind of just talk for like seven or eight minutes before they do anything. So yeah, th th if you haven't, looked at it duct tape a lot of these routines blake actually sells on his website um you know i know that he sells duct tape i've been doing it for about a year it's really good um we're going to go into another routine now and this is another example of an illusion that blake has put together that doesn't feel like an illusion and even though blake does illusions as you can see from the vanishing stool and what you're about to see now he doesn't come across as an illusion act. He's not putting people in boxes and sawing them in half and making them disappear. He's doing it in a very different way. And this is a perfect example. Let's have a look at the table illusion. Whenever I'm looking for new magicians to have on the show, I go to the preeminent voice of the magic community. That's CNN's Jake Tapper. Please welcome Tapper approved magician Blake Voigt. So I say that because uh, Jake Tapper told me about you, and yes. he said I am going to love you because I love magicians. So amazing! Hi. hi, hi! Thank you for having me. Thanks for being here. I'm excited to show you some magic. Okay. And for the first trick, I'm going to need some help. Okay. Okay. So Andy, would you please join us over here? Please give Andy a round of applause. <laughs> this way. Nice How are you? you, sir? You can stand right here between okay. us. Now, you guys have a lot of magicians on the show. We do. Right? Good magic, amazing magic. Mm -hmm. But I noticed that not a lot of magicians teach you guys tricks. No, they don't. So how about you guys, like, get to learn a trick today? Is that exciting? Yeah. Audience? Yes? Okay. So unfortunately, in order to do this, we're going to have to sacrifice one person that doesn't get to know how the trick works, and that's going to be Andy. <laughs> right. Is that okay with you, sir? It sure is. Okay. Is that okay with you, audience? Excellent. Okay. What are they going to say? No? No, that's true. So, Andy, first thing, I want you to close your eyes. And, Ellen, if you wouldn't mind placing your left hand over Andy's eyes. You're not scared. Is it scary? Or your right hand. It no, was... it's not scary. It's not scary. He Either th hand. Just he so thinks he we're think. doing something. I don't know what we're doing. This is a magic trick. I know. This is a magic okay? trick. Okay. All right. Don't don't close your, don't close don't your yell eyes. At you. Keep your eyes closed. Close and what we're going to do is hypnotize you. Okay. So, audience, we're going to count backwards from five. Five, four, three, two, one. Perfect. Okay, so Alan, now you can remove your hand. Andy, okay. you can open your eyes. Andy, yes or no, do you feel hypnotized? Ish. <laughs> not really. That, if I'm being honest, not really, but I don't know that's okay. what it would feel like. It so. would have been weirder if you said yes, okay. to be honest. Okay, all, all right. right. We're going to move over this way. Okay, okay, Andy, I'll have you stand right here. Ellen, if you can stand right here, and I'm going to stand right here. Andy, I'm going to have you pick a few cards out of a deck. Okay. And we're going to see how hypnotized you actually are. Okay. Okay, so I don't want to know the cards. Ellen, you shouldn't know the cards, but it's just for you, Andy. Okay. So please reach in and take out one card. Good. Look at it. Don't let Ellen see. Don't let me see. Okay. And then once you know the card, Andy, don't show the cameras. I want you to place it face down in your left hand and place your right hand on top, sandwich it, and hold it right over the table. And I want you to stare at your hands. Okay? Just stare okay. and concentrate on your hands. Now, Ellen, if you wouldn't minute. mind, step right over here. Andy, just keep staring at your hands. And okay. I'm going to try to receive one card. Keep looking at your hands. I know. Okay, concentrate. I'm going to try to see one card and concentrate on one card. Okay, perfect. Okay, Ellen, we can move back. Andy, I think I have something. Okay. Yes or no? Andy, are you thinking of the Eight of Spades? Let's see. The Eight of Spades! That's insane. What? Pretty cool? Wow. 
pretty insane. Pretty insane. But I'm the magician. You'd expect right. me to be able to do that, Andy. That's crazy. How much cooler would it be, though, if Ellen read your mind? Wow. That, I, don't I, want, I don't want to know what's in his mind. <laughs> <laughs> we'll make it quick. We'll All right, it quick. okay, I'm okay, ready. Okay, Andy, I'm gonna have you pick another card. So definitely don't let Ellen see this one. Take it out, look at that card, memorize it, and then assume the position with the card between your hands right over here on the table and stare at your hands. Okay, you I Just stare at your hands, concentrate on them. Ellen, take a step aside. Andy, just look at your hands. And Ellen, I want you to try to receive one card. So just try to see one card. Don't say anything out loud, Ellen, but I think okay. you should receive one card. I, uh, yeah, okay. Okay, Ellen, we're gonna move back. And Andy, what I want you to do is stare into Ellen's eyes. And Ellen, please read Andy's mind and tell him what card he is thinking of. <laughs> I'm thinking five of diamonds. No way. Are you kidding me? Whoa! <laughs> wow. Amazing. How did you... You looked at me, Amazing. I don't know. You looked at me. You looked at me. Well, you obviously know that... No, I don't know. You okay, just... let's try one more. Okay. Let's try one more. The ultimate version of this, Andy, and The Ellen. audience knows. Well, how about that? Here, I, yeah, I, I got know. an Somebody idea. knows something that what I don't. What if the entire audience... What if the entire audience could read your mind, Andy? Are you guys up for that? Yeah. Andy, last round. This Take out a card. Definitely don't let me see it. Don't let Ellen see it. Take the card out. Look at the card. And then assume the position once you know the card. I'm going to stay over here. You can lower it so I, don't, I couldn't signal them or no. anything. Ellen will stay over here as well. Andy, look at your hands. And audience, I want you to try to receive one card. Try to think of one card. Audience, don't say anything out loud. Audience, Andy, concentrate on your card. Uh Audience, you should have one card it's right a now. Magic move. Okay, that's a good magic move, man. Yeah. It's a really good one. Okay, so here we go. Audience, one, two, three. Two of hearts. Shut up. The two of hearts. Wow. Pretty cool. Pretty wow. cool. Now we're gonna move right over here. Step oh, right back to where we're we are. Not, now here's the yet. main question. The question of the day is, audience, yes or no? Should we tell Andy what's going on? No. Yes, I know. Well, here's the deal. Yeah. Andy, I'm a little bit nicer than them. So I'm going to tell you, Please. we've actually got somebody under the table. The thing that people don't realize is it's actually your very own Twitch, everybody! There was a girl that climbed under there. there was a girl that climbed under there. I don't know what he did. It's crazy. I was actually dancing with the reindeer, and then all of a sudden... Wow. Andy is more confused than before. I don't even understand. That's, I mean, we all saw a girl climb under there, right? So this is basically the illusionist's version of paper balls over the head, I think is the best way you could describe it, right? It's, it's, a, it's a little bit like paper balls over the head. It's a little bit like uh, that Sean Farquhar book test, that, uh, that book test he does with the, um, the blank pages. It's a little bit like that in so much as... The audience think they are in on the trick the entire way through. And at the end, you turn things around and you show them that it's not what they think. It's a little bit like that sixth sense moment that I've talked about in the past, where you're leading the audience down the garden path and then you're just pulling the rug from under their feet. Now, I actually plan on getting this. I'll, I'll tell you right now, this is probably the next illusion that I'm going to pick up for my illusion act. And one of the reasons I like this so much is because it's the perfect way to introduce a CEO or a VIP. You know, if a lot of the time I'm booked to do one illusion um, or one 10 minute spot before an awards dinner or something like that. And I'll come on and I've got to do something that's going to grab the audience's attention. And I've been asked many, many times in the past to perform something where I'm going to make the bride, uh, you know, the bride and groom or a CEO or a VIP appear on stage. And I've got different ways of making VIPs appear on stage. That's absolutely fine. This is the best way I've ever seen of making a VIP appear on stage because it doesn't feel like a VIP is going to appear. When you do a normal VIP production, it's like, hey, I've got this empty box. Here we go. Look, it's Bob, which is great. But this just feels like you're doing a card trick and you're letting the audience in on exactly what's going on, right? That's what this feels like. And so the audience are off guard. They don't expect anything else. And then that moment where you go, well, I'm going to tell you all how it works. I'm going to let you in on what the audience already knows. I've got a helper that's telling me everything. But this is what you didn't know. And you pull the cloth off and you've got somebody completely different. 
I mean, wow, that, that moment is so strong. That moment is such a big moment that you never see coming. And it's why I love this illusion so much. I really do. It, it's great. It doesn't feel like an illusion. It looks just like a table. It's not like a box on stage with places to put swords or anything like that. It looks like a table. And you're just doing a card trick on a table. But in actual fact, you've got this incredible illusion that allows you to just have this production of a person and they didn't even know that you were going to be making someone appear. So it's going to be a very genuine reaction when you pull that tablecloth off and they realise that everything that they thought is not true. So you've got the very, which is great for a finale, but the other thing is because of the routining, and again, we've spoken about this with Blake before, we're back to that word, routining. Because of the routining, you've got a very funny build-up. You've got a very funny build-up to you know the finale it's great having that really strong finale but if it's boring five minutes to get there and it's very procedural then that's no good but you've got this very funny paper balls over the head type moment where the audience think they know exactly what's going on and then you pull the rug from under their feet it's a little bit like the vanishing stool in that regard in that they think they know what's happening here they expect the final stool to be a particular color because they've seen it twice already and even when they, they see premium clear coat, they probably think it's like a see-through stool or something. And you pull the cloth off and the stool's not there. Really strong moment. Really, really strong moment. So, yeah, that's the, uh, that's the fourth uh, Blake Voigt routine I wanted to go through with you. I'm going to go through one more now, which is another opening routine. I know we talked about duct tape, which is a great opener. This is another great opener that you can include in a stage act. And it also involves playing cards as well. It's called Envelope Opener. Let's have a look at that. Here's the first trick, I need your help, okay? In a deck of cards, there are high cards and there are low cards. Which ones would you like, the high cards or the low cards? The high cards, yes? And I knew you would say the high cards. <laughs> Next question is for you. Out of the high cards, let's say uh, Tim, Jack, Queen, or King. Up to you, which one do you want, sir? King, King yes? Yeah. And is there any way I could have known you were gonna say that? No. no. And I correctly predicted? No. <laughs> King, King, let's say, uh, for you, sir, last question. King of clubs, hearts, spades, or diamonds? Up to you, which one? Hearts. Hearts, are you sure? Yes. Okay, no more dumb jokes, no more dumb jokes. There is one card and one card only in there. <laughs> and you wanted the king of hearts? Woo! <laughs> I don't even want to show you. <laughs> I'm just going to show you, sir. Okay, lean forward, lean forward, lean forward. What do you think? What do you think? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, wow. <laughs> you nailed it. <laughs> the brunch show, this kid was like, mom? <laughs> No, 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 this is not the dumb joke castle, okay? You said hi, you said king, you said hearts. Ladies and gentlemen, I have one card here and one card only, the very own king of all! Okay, so that was the envelope opener. And I reviewed this as well a couple of years ago and uh, maybe a year and a half ago, something like that. And I love this trick. One of the reasons I love this trick so much is because, again, it's a great... You walk out on stage and you've got comedy, you've got built-in comedy, you've got this fantastic routining building up to this great moment at the end. And I think that's something that really Blake personifies every single time I see him perform, which is every single moment of 
the performance is thought through. There's no dead time. I've talked about this on the channel before. Whenever you're performing, every couple of seconds, there should be something that's happening. You should be engaging the audience. You don't want to allow people time to switch off. And that's what Blake does and does so well. Every moment there's something happening. And there's a couple of cheesy gags in there. You've got the arrow thing. You've got the uh, no gag, the classic no gag. You've got the wow moments. And all of that is wonderful. But then you've got this really strong payoff. And the method behind it is great. The gags allow you to do the actual trick with almost no skill or sleight of hand. Like almost anybody could do this which is just really, really cool. And what you didn't see in that performance is I love Scott could have, uh, Scott, sorry, uh, Blake could have actually had this routine so that at the end, you just bring the card out and you just turn it around and you show it's the card. But I love the fact that he, he has the wow, the extra moment where they think there's another gag there and he shows it to the person who goes wow and then you turn it around and you got wow and then you open it up and it's the actual card and you give it away for the spectator to keep. I love that. It shows just how experienced Blake is. And he totally gets how to ring every moment of magic and every moment of comedy and every moment of entertainment out of this one particular routine. And the reason it's such a good routine is because it's over in like a couple of minutes. The audience feels like they've had a completely free choice and yet you've predicted right from the very beginning the exact card that they would pick. Can you think of anything stronger really? But as well as being super strong, it's also really, really funny. And I think if I round this whole thing up, I've said it before, I'll say it again, one of the best things about Blake is his performances are funny, they're well routined, there's no procedure, it's not boring, but as well as all of that, there's incredible magic as well. So there you go, guys. That's another 5x5 five five in the bag. That is a 5x5 five five on Blake Voigt. Do me a favor. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. You want to see more videos like this, like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below. I'm going to be back again very, very soon with another video. But honestly, one more time, I want to say thank you for joining me right here on Magic TV. I'll see you again soon. My name's Craig from Magic TV. <laughs>